Hi, I'm Paul Gress, and I've been asked to address the question of whether protected areas and economic development are binary options. It's a great question, particularly given that Canada has just committed to providing 30% for nature by 2030, which means we'll be looking at establishing a whole new range of protected areas in this country. <clears throat> protected areas confer economic benefits, of course, through tourism and through the protection of natural capital. Uh, but I think the question, of course, is referring to um, the interrelationship between economic activity like oil and gas development and forestry and protected areas. I've seen the binary side uh, driving back roads in New Brunswick many years ago on the right hand side of my car was a beautiful forest in the Fundy National Park and on the left hand side of the road was a massive clear cut and clearly that doesn't work. Since those days we've been looking at <clears throat> more progressive ways of addressing protected areas and how we integrate them into the landscape. In some cases that's been done through zoning, um, through protected areas, intensively managed areas, and multiple use areas, but that doesn't work in all circumstances. And I think we're getting to a, a greater realization that we have to integrate uses across the entire landscape. And <clears throat> for protected areas to be effective, they have to be part of an interconnected network to allow wildlife to move between them. And I think that's the approach that's obviously taking precedence in integrated land management and integrated land use planning. So what does that mean as we go forward? Well, 30% is a big target. And in 1989, World Wildlife Fund launched their Endangered Spaces Campaign, which was intended to protect 12% of Canada. Unfortunately, the definition of protected area that they used was so rigid that an area like the Thelon Game Sanctuary, which may be the biggest, if not, if maybe one of the biggest um, protected areas in Canada, was not eligible for inclusion. If we're going to get 30%, we have to take a much more open view of protection. And one of the, one of the greatest ways to ensure that land is protected is to make sure that somebody cares about it which is people who are living on or place value on the land. And for that reason, the uh, Indigenous Protected and Conservation Areas and the, the Guardians Program are going to be terrific contributors to the achievement of this 30% by 2030 goal. Thank you. And if you'd like to talk about the issue in more detail, the Reconciling Ways of Knowing staff uh, can put you in touch with me.